Hello everyone. Welcome to another session of Inap Podcast. I'm Sonoja and I'm excited to join my co-host Kiran for another interesting conversation. I hope everyone is keeping safe and doing well. Well, we started the series of podcasts a few weeks ago uh, when we had an interesting Q&A with Inap President Mr. Satish Babu about the importance of cyber hygiene. Uh, it was a very relevant topic considering the times we are in. Today, we will talk about face recognition. which has become interesting in many ways on one side it is proof that artificial intelligence is actually maturing and starting to possess skills that only a few years ago may have been impossible on the other hand it is a very controversial idea from the point of view of privacy and ethics uh, so without much further ado let me hand it over to kiran for a quick introduction about our guest and the topic hello everyone welcome today we will be talking about face recognition systems The advancements in deep learning has helped improve the accuracy of face recognition, and it is used for everything from automatically tagging pictures to unlocking cell phones to surveillance. But what are some of the project aspects of face recognition? What are the tools available for the project, and what does it take to successfully implement a face recognition system? To discuss all this, we have with us Mr. Amar Nadraja, Executive Chairman and Co-Founder of Inapp. and alumni of iit delhi he is a seasoned technology expert with several years of experience for ibm japan jp morgan chase and milma he is also an active volunteer in ieee and has among other things held the positions of kerala session chair and ieee humanitarian activities chair mr rajaja thank you for joining us i welcome you to this session we are very excited to have you in our podcast today Thank you, Sunuja and Kiran. Very happy to be with you to discuss this interesting topic. Um, hello, Mr. Raja. Um, the format of the session will be a quick Q and A, uh, and we'll try and cover as many questions as possible. I'll start off with the first one before I hand it over to Kiran. Uh, so my first question is that uh, people generally understand what face recognition means and uh, what it does. Uh, we 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 have seen it in movies, even in our smart smartphones. uh but most often we do not understand diff- the different components or the layers that are actually involved in a face recognition system so could you talk about what exactly is involved in a face recognition system face recognition as the name says is simply to recognize a human face there are basically if you look at it there are two parts to it i would call the first part uh, face detection that is in a large photograph Uh, we have to find out how many human faces are there it is a part of object detection and it is quite tricky given the fact that we have to scan the photograph or video and detect all the human faces in it regardless of it, the size it could be a full frame uh, of photograph or a, a tiny face in the photograph we have to recognize each one of this so this is a very difficult part of face uh, recognition and face detection as i would call it the second part is the actual face recognition this that is comparing the faces in the photograph with set of known stored face of faces and see if there are any matching faces the problem is made further complicated because of alignment that is to say tilt rotation or even things like the pose the person may be laughing the person may be crying the person may be uh, looking somewhere and these are all different when you look at it from the computer point of view then there are some factors like partial hiding these days of uh, corona virus you have lots of people right. with masks so what happens uh, to this uh, there are many other factors that will uh, affect this then there is an application of classification of faces which is used by some people where the second phase second part of face recognition need not be there but they help in identifying the gender the age and many other facts of the human face recently we came across an application to indicate if there is any person entering the office without a mask and ring an alarm 
So uh, basically what you're saying is that face recognition is actually a series of steps which leads to the identification of a person or you know, trying to many characteristics of a person. Now you talked about uh, uh, different steps and you have the detection, identification, then you have the classification. So this takes us to the next logical question, which is um, how are these steps done and what are some of the techniques or the algorithms that are behind this? Uh, this art and science of face recognition is only evolving. Uh, but there are many algorithms available. Let's understand some of the groups. Uh, in the early 70s, an attempt was made to detect facial features and have algorithms based on these features. That is, recognize the eye, nose, mouth, etc. and find the distance between these uh, components or uh, these features, as you would call it. Uh, this started as early as 1970s and was pursued till the 90s. Uh, though there was not much success due to the very slow computers used then. These are called the geometric algorithms. The other set of algorithms are called photometric. These are, have the same principles of uh, phase identification similar to other biometrics. Let us say fingerprint recognition or retina scan. Here, the whole image of the face is taken and a signature obtained from it in a very similar way that a fingerprint is uh, recognized. The world today is mostly into photometric algorithms. Uh, on the face detection side, uh, we have used uh, two classifiers, the HAR and the MTCN. While HAR is based on a set of manual rules, MTCNN is completely a neural network version. When I say a neural network version, we just feed this human faces and the network learns and automatically adjusts its weights and parameters and comes out with an algorithm to recognize the object under examination. So from what you described, we understand it's a complex technology and so cannot be without its challenges in development. What are some of the common challenges we face when developing a face recognition system? And can you also talk about some of some aspects of face recognition that teams may overlook when implementing it in a project? Uh, talking of uh, teams overlooking and uh, the challenges in face recognition, one of the uh, challenges that we notice is the power of the machine we use. We see tutorials in uh, on face recognition and try and implement it on our uh, computer. It works fine. But we need high amount of uh, computing power and good machines. Uh, a graphical processor is essential if you would like to do some real-time face recognition. At 30 frames per second in a video, it is quite a challenge to uh, recognize the face within 1 30th of a second. We created some algorithms uh, in-house to skip a few frames and say use one in three frames. In this way, we are able to do face recognition in the frames and keep up with the incoming frame rate. So this was uh, one of the main challenges. The others, let me, let me uh, talk about uh, three other challenges which may not come in uh, other biometric identifications like fingerprint recognition and all that. One is this lighting condition. Lighting affects face recognition a lot. Lighting is measured in lux and daylight is around 10,000 lux. And office lighting is about 350 lux. Our eye adjusts quickly to these changes and we feel that uh, a room is quite bright. But in actuality, it may not, it may be under 350, maybe 200 lux uh, lighting compared to a 100,000 lux of a direct uh, sunlight. Uh, so uh, this uh, changes things and uh, affects a lot in face recognition. The second is the angle of view. The angle of view, it matters a lot. The ideal would be a plus minus 10 degree from the level of the face. If the camera is too high or too low, the detection and recognition is very bad. The size of the image is the third uh, of this, uh, said object detection of the face 
the first part that I mean, takes place when the face is only about 20 into 20 pixels. Though the reliable face recognition, which is the second part, takes place only at nearly 100 into 100 pixels. If we try to detect faces at the low resolution, uh, <clears throat> the detection may take place, but the recognition uh, will end up in problems. And we may say that the face recognition uh, accuracy is very low. In many of the projects, the trial is done uh, in, let us say, uh, open offices during daytime and a good camera angle. But while installing, we install it in darker areas and have no control over the face sizes. Hence, its uh, face recognition um, may become difficult in the installed version as compared to the tested areas. Okay. So now we know that the AI algorithms are also evolving and getting better with time. And so are tools. However, looking at the number of face recognition tools, how do we decide which tools are to be used? We have uh, some tools like Amazon Recognition, Microsoft Azure Face API, and then there are several open source tools such as Open Face and Daily. So how do we decide which one to use? If you ask about tools, the whole work of AI is currently based on neural networks and calculations involving multi-dimensional matrices. While most programming languages can work with these matrices, there are some which are very good at it. Like Python, R, MATLAB and others have been used a long time and these tend to be the best. Python has been a favorite. Python has many libraries which work with matrices, the most popular being NumPy. In working with the images, OpenCV has been the most popular library. OpenCV interfaces are available in many programming languages. These days we are trying out a new language called Julia, which seems to be very interesting. <laughs> One of the, if you look at the most popular basic AI libraries uh, that are accessible from Python uh, for neural networking, the most important, I believe, are Scikit, PyTorch, and uh, Google's TensorFlow. Uh, these libraries help a lot and uh, we never go to uh, raw neural network programming for face recognition. On top of this, there are many other libraries like Kera, which have been <coughs> written on top of uh, uh, TensorFlow. Recently, there have been some libraries which target directly at face recognition, uh, like OpenFace, Dlib, FaceNet, etc. More importantly, many of the tools have started appearing on clouds like Amazon Recognition and Microsoft's Azure Face. These are quite good. The images here are transmitted to the cloud and the face recognition takes place in the cloud. So you need a good bandwidth to manage these uh, recognition. We talked about how AI and deep learning algorithms have played a significant role in improving face recognition systems. But what do you think is the accuracy rate of these algorithms that are currently being used as per our experience? You brought on an important point here. There are many claims to accuracy of algorithms, but, to sad, but sad to say in practical experiences, non-recognition and misrecognition error comes to about one to three percentage, which may not appear large, but it renders this whole uh, scheme unsuitable. This usually happens when, the, when we are under bad lighting conditions or bad camera angles and when you have no control over this. What I would say is that face recognition could be used as a second factor in authentication, increasing the confidence in the two-factor authentication. Now that you mentioned face recognition being used as a second factor authentication, I feel the next question might be relevant here. We are in the age of deep fakes and so identifying image anomalies is a major challenge when it comes to these deep learning algorithms. So how do we handle that? There are chances of non-recognition and misrecognition. It's 4 o'clock. With uh, 1 to 2 percent errors, I would not use it in systems where absolute surety is required. 
it can be a part of a two factor authentication like for example if you are presenting your passport at an automated machine and in addition your face is scanned you can let the person go even if there is a 70 to 80 person matching but this cannot be the only system and say that you have if you don't recognize the person to a 90% accuracy you don't let him go then a uh, lot of other problems and uh, may arise when we are talking about challenges associated with the development and implementation of face recognition one important thing that comes to my mind is the testing aspect of the project can you talk about the challenges that come up during the testing phase in a face recognition project the main challenge that we find in testing is that uh, instead of testing it on the development site it has to be tested on the at the place where it is to be installed the conditions vary very much and it is difficult to simulate uh, one location with the other so make sure that uh, after the end of uh, your development phase you move to the uh, place where it is to be installed and test it on site that will really give you a testing uh, a good uh, test so we all know face recognition can be used in surveillance what are some of the areas where face recognition is widely used that people are not really aware of okay uh, there was in surveillance um, uh, that has been one of the uh, biggest uses of uh, face recognition there are many like smart advertising you can recognize the person or at least classify the person to be uh, 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 the gender of the person or the age of the person and uh, make the advertisement suitable to it so uh, the advertising basing on the target is one of the uh, very useful applications that face recognition has been used for the other one which i very very much like is that uh, the blind people find it difficult to understand if there is another person in the room or another person has just walked in uh, for the blind uh, a face recognition tool which would uh, let them know that the person has entered and this is the person who has entered is a great advantage and uh, that has been a, a very interesting tool in my mind uh, the others that have been used are recognizing a vip in an airport let us say a vip could be either in the positive or negative sense uh, could be a, a terrorist or uh, a really vip so you can recognize them and uh, give a warning to the police but it also does something uh, interesting that you are looking at this not being the only identification source you have recognized it recognize that person the police goes and says hello so he can uh, the policeman can verify that after all it is the same person before he greets a vip so this is again a part of this two factor that i talked about another one interesting application is to identify people at a retail store this has been one of our projects here so what happens is a person comes to the cash register how nice it would be to recognize him and say hello so and so rather than asking him please give me your card do you have a membership in this uh, shop and such kind of questions will become unnecessary if you can identify the person and also look at the person's likes and dislikes and say why today you haven't purchased a bread or something like that it can be used for loyalty points etc um now i think we are uh, nearing the end of our session time but i have one more question before we actually wrap up um now there are many ethical issues and data protection issues with face recognition systems uh, even if you take in us you see that uh, recently in 2020 many cities like san diego uh, and um, san francisco have actually used the, have actually banned the use of face recognition uh, even in india many civil liberty groups have actually opposed the other project over privacy concerns so do you see this as a trend which could have a significant impact on the use of uh, face recognition systems face recognition 
by uh, by its nature is a non intrusive biometric identification and not non intrusive in a <clears throat> bad sense i would say that is while the other biometrics like fingerprinting and retina scan require the consent of the individuals you can't take a fingerprint without a person knowing about it so right. on the other hand we have this uh, face recognition where the person need not even know that is being recognized the camera is quite can be hidden quite well so the person knows about this this is a real threat to intrusion and uh, <clears throat> privacy uh, and has privacy implications and that is why rightly a lot of cities in the us have taken these steps however on the other hand it is okay to take attendance using face recognition let us say Uh, this is because the person knows that there is a camera there and being used to re record your attendance and the person can even smile at the camera to <clears throat> to be recognized well Mach but machine recognizing you without your permission is a is obviously a very great concern especially for privacy right uh, now before we go could you share your final thoughts on the topic yeah we talked about privacy at the last but right. i'd like to just say whenever we push the frontiers of science mm -hmm. there are humanitarian privacy and ethical issues that come to the fore and mm -hmm. i believe only science is the answer to the issues that science creates so we have to look out for issues on how to solve these privacy and ethical issues we must also not be afraid to go ahead and uh, use these new inventions and discoveries and also to make them safe for uh, human beings thank okay. you okay thank you again mr rajesh for spending the time with us and uh, we look forward to having similar sessions with you soon thank you for the enjoyable